All right. Thanks for coming out. Uh, before we get started, I have a special announcement that uh, the Kentucky weekend, November 18th, seems like years away at this point. But the Kentucky weekend, we have something that I think our fans will be excited about and have been asking for a while. Uh, da Rude, the creator of Sandstorm, will be here that weekend. He will be doing a pregame concert in Gamecock Park. He will be the celebrity starter. Many of you guys obviously uh, only know Darude for Sandstorm, but if you're a Darude fan, you also know the hit songs Feel the Beat and Calm Before the Storm. So thank you, Justin King, for that uh, as well. But uh, really excited about that. Obviously a song that's synonymous with Gamecock Athletics. Uh, you hear that song anywhere in the world, people think of South Carolina football. So really, really, really pumped that he's going to be here for the Kentucky game. Uh, and certainly want to give a special thanks to our corporate partners, Ariat and Harrison's for making this happen. So hopefully uh, we're rolling at that point and a ton of excitement and all that as well. And, and that'll be a fun weekend when he comes. So really looking forward to that and, and uh, appreciate him making time to come here as well. So um, love this week for us. Obviously classes are starting here at Carolina on, in a couple days. Uh, students are coming back, obviously was helping, was, was involved with moving on Saturday over at the dorms. Uh, it was great getting to meet a lot of our freshman class and their families and hearing their stories and how excited they are about Saturdays in williams Bryce Stadium. So that was fun. Uh, Saturday night had our last preseason scrimmage of the year. A uh, great way to finish, <clears throat> excuse me, preseason camp uh, as well. And, uh, you know, now we're in football-wise into our uh, mock game week uh, is how we call it so basically we're doing everything this week just like we will next week when we play north carolina in regards to our schedule uh so monday during the season is our players off day so they were off yesterday um today was our normal tuesday practice tomorrow will be our normal wednesday practice thursday will be our normal thursday practice friday will be our normal friday walk through and then friday afternoon evening we'll do our situational practice slash scrimmage, which is going through every conceivable situation that you can think of that could possibly come up in a football game. So we'll do that to wrap up the week on Friday. Uh, but it's great to be able to kind of run through it this time so our guys understand how we practice and how we meet. And with uh, some new coaches, they understand what the routine is going to be next week. If there's issues on uh, what we did in practice today or – the number of reps we had a certain in a certain period or how much time a certain period was. Was it too long? Was it not enough? You can kind of tweak those things. So we're ready to roll uh, next week when we do it for real as well. thought the scrimmage on Saturday night went great. We had planned on getting around 75, 80 plays, and we ended up getting about 113, I think, is what it ended up being. And uh, part of that was because uh, the, the football gods were listening to us and kind because we were talking – some of the coaches and Luke Day and myself that, you know, we just we hadn't done enough, in my opinion, or hadn't had uh, to enough like long sustained drives during preseason camp that, you know, we've had some eight, nine, ten play drives, but we needed to really manufacture some longer drives. And we had planned to do it some in practice this week. And then, lo and behold, when Spencer and the ones got out there, they had an 18 play drive on Saturday night that resulted in a touchdown. And then we had a two-minute drive at the end of the scrimmage that was a 14-play, two-minute drive at the end of the game. So we were able to manufacture uh, some of those, which was awesome. Uh, we needed it from a conditioning standpoint. Um, you know, going back last year, we didn't realize that we had a lot of long drives, that we were on the field offense and defense. So we need to make sure that conditioning-wise we're ready to sustain uh, when we have a long drive as well uh so we got a lot of work done and that's why the numbers got skewed in the scrimmage but saw a lot of good things and obviously as always a lot to correct as well i thought preseason camp has been really good these guys work uh appreciate their effort and the way they uh, battle each and every day out there you know last week was hot as i can remember here in columbia three days in a row on monday tuesday wednesday and we were out there all three days in full pads and we were doing some live tackling all three days and stayed outdoors all three days. So 
credit to those guys for pushing through. You know, if you're going to be tough and be physical, you got to practice tough. you got to practice physical. And we certainly have this preseason, and we will continue to as the season goes on. We don't all of a sudden just go and relax when we get to the season. Like, we continue to practice really hard during the year as well. And that's why, in my opinion, we've been able to play our best football towards the end of the season the last two years as well. Um, you know, injury-wise, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, there'll be some certainly some guys as we get into it next week that would be listed as maybe questionable as you go into the game. But in my mind, we're expecting all those guys to play, Trey Knox, uh, uh, Juice Wells, Nick Harbour, uh, all those guys that have been uh, banged up a little bit. They all tell me they're playing, and they're all on track too as well. And, and that's how we're, we're going forward with that. So if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to address the injury stuff here in a minute and if you have some questions about guys specifically. And then certainly – we're in the game week, which also means that we just had a – would have had a Sunday. So starting this Sunday, all of you and everyone out there need to make sure they turn in, tune in to our, tele, our coaches show on Sunday mornings on Valley Sports and Sunday nights on Watch Fox as well. So if I am giving a free promotion to a rival TV station, I'll do that again and say make sure you find our TV show on local listings as well on Sunday nights. Uh, also, and then this week will be our first uh, Carolina Calls, our radio show, which I would encourage all of you to come to. It's a fantastic time at Backstreet's Grill. And uh, if you can't be there in person, certainly tune in on our radio network as well. Wednesday night this week, but Thursday nights from here on out. So don't that get that confused. It's Wednesday night this week, but Thursday nights from here on out. But a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to make that TV show on Sundays really, really good. And, um, um, uh, and as well as the radio show also. So there's a little plug for both those things as well. And we're going to try and continue to do a better job of promoting those things this year from a uh, athletic department and marketing standpoint also so people are aware of them I had some people some friends of mine that close friends of ours in columbia that said to me last year didn't even realize you had a tv show on sunday so i said shame on me we haven't done enough good job of promoting that tv show because every single game win or lose i've walked my rear end out to that tv set and do that tv show at the stadium before i get on the plane and come home or get in my car or drive home so certainly want people to tune in and it's a great look at gamecock football uh, and inside access and all that as well, getting to know our players and coaches and staff and, and getting a recap of the game. So a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, recommend you tune in. So with that, any questions? Shana, we've heard from a lot of the players about how good Spencer's been looking in preseason camp. From when he came in last year and prepared for the season to how he's done it this year, what's been the biggest difference? What kind of changes have you seen? Um, I'd say he's a lot more comfortable right now he knows the people around him better um teammates i mean um understanding at this point last year he had never played a game for south carolina he understands what it's like to be in williams bryce stadium and how we do things and, and what the people are like around him i think his comfort level in the offense certainly there's some new stuff obviously but there is some carryover uh from last year as well but he's just very 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 um uh, comfortable from what I can tell and, and what he's shown. His leadership has certainly grown. I hear him out there. He's more vocal. He's more confident in what he's doing. And then I think that relationship with he and Dow is is fantastic. Um, you know, Spencer and I met on Friday and just kind of talked about where, think, where he is and where we are. And that's one thing that he really, really talked about was just um, – his relationship with Coach Loggins and how he's helped him, and, and not just with Spencer, but that entire offense as well, the relationship with him. We had Trey in here a little bit ago. Just He was saying he, he expects to be ready to play by week one. How have you liked his rehab going, and how important of a piece can he be to that offense against North Carolina? Yeah, he said, what about week one? Oh yeah, he's playing week one. Like I don't even know what he's he's trying to like build build it up and all that. He's playing. He's practiced for the last week. He scrimmaged last week. So um, he's been fantastic. Yeah, two two weeks ago, tweaked his knee a little bit. I think he missed two days of practice, and then he was back and has been full speed since and whatnot. So he's been fantastic. He's a guy that. He's uh, really athletic. You would think that come being a receiver, then going to tight end. So that athleticism shows. He uh, he's really good in the run game as well. I was just watching some tape from practice today before I came in here, and just some of the things he did in the run game. It's impressive. He just he understands leverage and 
where he needs to be and where his head needs to be on when he's making blocks and things like that. So he's not afraid to stick his face in there. And he's just, he's so intelligent um, from an offensive standpoint, you know, he can help others get lined up. He knows how to get lined up and how to get open. Uh, so in so many ways, he's got a great relationship with Spencer because of that. But he's a guy, he's going to be a weapon, uh, not just in our passing game, but run game and offense in general, special teams as well, long bodies like that. We didn't have enough of those guys last year. Now you talk about him and not to get on the special teams kick, but when you talk about him and Josh Simon and, and Desmond, I mean, you got long, lengthy bodies. Uh, as well. So I'm excited about Trey, what he brings to the team and, and what he's done already and what he'll do this year. Can to bring you back to Spencer for a second, um, just kind of a zoomed out way, having met him when he was at Oklahoma, what are kind of the big changes you see in him now as a senior from maybe when you were first working with him as a freshman? <laughs> Good question. Um, physically, his body has changed getting into our weight rope our weight program with uh, Coach Day and how we do things in the weight room, and Spencer would tell you that. I mean, he he's bigger, he's he's he uh, he's m more bulky. Coach Limbo used the word husky this morning. He's more like husky. He's that in a special teams meeting. So he's 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 built. Um, he, he's changed his body. So physically. That helps him just be able to be endurable, the strength to make throws, things like that as well. Um, and then obviously when I was first around him, I was around him one year where he was a backup to Jalen Hurts and only played in three games, I think, that season. Um, so he was kind of learning his way. And then the next year, he, excuse me, next year he was the starting quarterback, but he's still a redshirt freshman with a bunch of older guys around him as well. So that's probably the biggest thing I see is just his, you know, his confidence and and um, uh, how he's changed his body. And then to go back to what David asked too, I think he's just, he's having a lot of fun. Not that he wasn't at Oklahoma, but he's having a lot of fun out there. I mean, he came to me last week and just talked about this preseason camp and how he and some of the guys were talking that, yeah, it's really hard, but it's been efficient. They love the schedule. They're happy. They love coming over here each day. And, and that mindset that he has, it shows with the way he's playing. Shane, you guys added Drew Tuazama to the roster over the weekend. Just how do you, how did that process kind of come about, and, and what are realistic expectations for someone coming in two weeks before the season um, starts? Came about, he had a connection with Elijah Davis. They both spent some time um, at uh, East Mississippi Community College, so they knew each other. He's from Raleigh initially, or originally, so he had – connections to the Carolinas and, and wanted to, you know, get back closer to home. I believe uh, Coach Limbo and some other of our coaches were familiar with him from high school uh, recruiting that area um, as well. And then he was a guy that he needed to graduate from UAB and he wasn't able to graduate until a week or so ago. And he graduated. We were made aware. He went in the portal. You know, I think before I even found out he was in the portal, he had offers from, I want to say, like Mississippi State, Florida, some other places as well that were on him. And, um, you know, we immediately, I mean, the minute he went in the portal, started following him on Twitter and sent him a direct message and hit me right back and just kind of went from there as well. But I'll give the kid credit. Like, he got here once he went in the portal and we started communication and he decided where that this is where he wanted to be. Like, he literally got here um, – uh, late afternoon, got all of his paperwork done, did the stuff he needed to do in the training room and was in my office. And I'm like, well, we got a team meeting in like five minutes. You want to go? And he's like, yeah, come on. So he was in there in the team meeting and was full speed ahead. So he's grateful for the opportunity to be here. He's a great young man. And realistically, we expect him to play next Saturday night against North Carolina. Coach, there's been a lot of talk about some of the big games that y'all got in the month of September. And there's also been a lot of talk about the physicality course of the summer strength conditioning program and fall camp. Has that been emphasized due to the start of the schedule for this season? Or is it just something that you're just trying to continue from the past couple of years? Continue from the past. Um, honest to God, like not once have we talked about here's who we play in September, here's who we got in October. We better make things really physical because of who we're playing. Not one time. I would tell you if we did. Y'all know me. I'm honest. But we haven't. It's it's just – it's how we do things around here. It's how we practice. It's how we train in the summertime. Um, and, you know, uh, always have been that way. You know, I think this, this uh, summer was certainly 
a little bit gnarlier than maybe other summers and and we've had a physical preseason camp but I feel like we have you know the last two years as well and you always look back I mean I'm a note taker and always looking back at previous years and already thinking about preseason camp 2024 you know how we would maybe tweak some things and do some do some things different based on what we just went through in August of 2023. So you're always looking to evolve and be better the next year and things like that as well. But how we set up stuff and design stuff had nothing to do with, you know, how the schedule's starting. It's just how we do things. What we felt like this team needed more than any. Shane, a two-parter, because I don't think we had a chance to be able to ask you, but last the last time that we had a chance to be able to view practice, Pop Howard was in a blue non-contact jersey. Is he okay? Yeah, he was not in a blue non-contact. He was not in a blue non-contact today um, and is good to go. The reason I bring that up and not just specifically just talking about Pup, whether it be young players and even some of the older players, when they go through this process, right, whether it's the first time getting banged up or maybe they're in that non-contact jersey, from the psychological standpoint, how have you seen yourself have to grow with dealing with some of these players when they're going through the injury process? Because, again, some of these players, whether it be freshmen, whether it be upperclassmen, they might not have gone through that process. And you see, obviously, this fan base, any fan base, they want to see their guys get on the field and – they're around that. They see yeah. what's being said on social media. Yeah. No, it's hard. Um, great, great, great question. It's something that uh, we spend a lot of time talking about. There's no question about it. That We talk about um, trust trust your training, in other words. Like we, me and Luke and Chip, Luke, Chip Morton and I um, meet, you know, pretty much every day and talk about practice and was it, did we, was it a little too much here? Do we need to dial back here? Um, but with us, it's just – constantly emphasizing to our players you know trust how we do things like yeah a Tuesday practice like we just had in season it's going to be really 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 uncomfortable it's not supposed to be like comfortable and um preseason camp it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to have bumps and bruises and we're never going to put anybody out there if they're not healthy uh, but you have to understand that, you know, being uncomfortable, there's great growth in being uncomfortable. And we constantly are, you know, emphasizing that and talking to our guys about, you know, we use, use the expression, stay in the fight. You know, you got to stay in there and just keep battling and battling. And I've seen that. I mean, we we had guys that got banged up in our last couple scrimmages and came out for a couple plays where maybe in the past that guy would be done for the rest of practice. Same guys are back out there two plays later. And uh, really proud to see that. So just – Understanding that, yeah, we've gotten better as a football team the last couple of years as the season goes on. But not only that, we've gotten stronger. We've gotten faster. Like we have guys setting speed records, meaning they're running the fastest they ever have in a football game. We're doing that last year in November, like when, in the Tennessee game and in the, in the Florida game. I mean, we're hitting speed records. So trust the training. And then on top of that, too, from a psychological mental standpoint, because they're all there's there's all these high expectations for freshmen when they come in here. We literally just talked about it in our team meeting this morning. Like, it's okay if you're not quite ready to go out there and play 50 plays against North Carolina next week. It's okay if you're not quite ready to go out there and play 20 plays, because I didn't realize it, but we talked about it in the team meeting. Um, O'Donnell Fortune, Jordan Strawn, um, who else did we talk about? Boogie Huntley. Spencer Rattler, the carry-on joiner, Vershawn Lee, Ja'Kai Moore, all those guys, here's a little depth chart preview, all those guys should be starters for us in game one, and every single one of them redshirted. And everybody thinks, well, they're going to come in, I'm going to play 40 plays, 50 plays, and I'm going to be the man because there's all these expectations. And we got a great freshman class. Like Every single one of them is going to be a great player here at Carolina. But it's okay everybody on the outside expects you to be this mega star right now in game one it's okay if you're not quite there like it's our job as coaches to continue to bring you along and develop you and we're going to be a better team and you're going to be a better player in november than you are right now but uh sometimes i think we as fans sometimes as coaches just you know understand there's excuse me understand there's still 18 year old young men and um they're they're working to get there and they've got high expectations and they want to be great and it's our job as coaches to help them get there as well but it may not happen just right now but uh they're all going to be really good players for us but those are things that certainly i spent a lot of time thinking about um and we do talk about as a team too shane you said that spencer is more verbal this year with with him 
uh, does that mean he, uh, he, he gets on guys when they blow assignments or more as a motivator and encourager? Uh, I'd say both. You know, I think you've got to be, as a leader, um, your personality. Like, you can't be somebody you not, you're not. And I've told some of the leaders on our team, like one of the greatest leaders I've ever been around was Nick Chubb when I was at the University of Georgia, and he was our running back, and Nick never said a word. But what he did was he was an absolute workhorse in practice and in the weight room, and players respected him, and he was a leader because of that. And when he did spoke, speak, it was like, oh, my gosh. Um, so be, be who you are. Don't try and be somebody you're not. But being a leader, too, is about sometimes you got to there's, – there's confrontation involved uh, about that at times as well. We showed the team a Kobe Bryant video last week where he was talking about that. Like, you know, you can be a leader and – pump people up and pat them on the back and be positive. But then it's also, you know, making sure guys understand there's an expectation and an accountability level for – or an accountability for what is expected. So I've seen both from Spencer, whether it be a receiver running a wrong route, making sure he'll, he that receiver knowing that that's not um, what he expects or, or uh, encouraging a guy, you know, as well. I've seen both from Spencer, and I think he's equally uh, capable of both. Just one more on the injury front first. We've seen Tyree Johnson in the blue at every open practice. Is he good to go? I wouldn't say he's good to go. He would probably go in that questionable mix for next week. But um, uh, I would say – actually, I would say probably probable for next week would be my guess right now. He did not practice today, but he's not far off from being ready to practice. And then on the wide receiver front, you mentioned that one of your goals this camp was to kind of fill the rest of the depth chart. Where is that process right now? Is there anyone, any, anybody kind of grabbing the back of that depth chart at wide receiver right now? I got you trying to get a depth chart preview indirectly. I see that coming through the back door on the depth chart questions. Um, patience, darling, patience. Um, um, and that's a great movie quote, too. So I wasn't calling Alan a darling. If you know the movie, you know. Um I would say it's not as far along and solidified as maybe I would like right now, just being totally honest. I think there's no question if Juice is healthy, Juice and Amari and Brown and Xavier Leggett are our top three receivers. And who is four, five, six, seven, um, still to be determined. I was reading some of y'all's tweets before I came in here. I know some of the players were hyping up Omega Blake. Uh, as being in that mix, and he, I would certainly put him in that mix as long as we continue to uh, be consistent and practice as well. And it's like we told our players today that, you know, we started some scout team work today, and that is what your role is right now and not like your solidified permanent role for the rest of the season. And that includes the guys that weren't on the scout team today just because you weren't maybe on the scout team in parts of practice, and we don't do a ton of scout team work anyway. I think it was 14 minutes total the whole practice today. But um, just because you're in a position, good or bad right now, doesn't mean that that's where you're going to be against North Carolina or when we play Clemson at the end of the season. It's constantly uh, – we're in constant competition. So we got good receivers. I'm not saying that how that shakes out and what that rotation t is necessarily is to be determined. So I know you guys love when we put oars on the depth chart. So there's probably going to be a bunch of oars at receiver. I'm just going to give you a heads up, but maybe. I guess the folks in the comment section on YouTube are wondering about Antoine Wells and Nick Harbour. So what are <laughs> their specific uh, or as specific as you can get with, with where they're at right now? Uh, there, I expect them both. Um, I expect them both to play. Um, Juice was out there. He didn't practice practice, but he was out there running around today and catching balls and doing some light jogging and things like that. So um, are they full go right now? No. Do I expect both of them to play next Saturday night? Absolutely. Uh, and as far as defense, we just kind of across the board, what do you feel like you've, I guess, learned or, or seen from, from that group as a whole throughout this month? Yeah. Um, Starting in the secondary, I think those four guys, um, here's another depth chart preview. DQ, Nick, uh, O'Donnell, and Marcellus have picked up where they left off at the end of the season. I think those four are a solid uh, starting four at corner and safety. I like that group. Um, behind them is a bunch of young guys that are talented as well. So I'm excited about the freshman class that we have at the defensive back position. I've seen that and learned that. 
I like our depth at, at linebacker. You know, it's a solid group with more depth. I think we're going to be naturally better against stopping the run this year. I hope um, because we got some we got some size and physicality and some oomph in there as well. When you talk about the linebacker core uh, that we have, and then you know that that defensive end position uh, didn't have a lot of depth going into spring practice, but we're better now. Obviously, you know Tyreek and getting Jordan Strawn back is is helpful. Brian Thomas has come on. Adding JT Gear has been a great pickup for us. Drew, who he just brought in from UAB. You know, we got some guys. Desmond's a talented freshman, so we got some guys there that can that can help us. So I feel better about the depth there, as long as we can keep guys healthy. And then, um, you know, we at the defensive tackle position, we're fortunate to have three older guys there, and and really four older guys, and Nick Barrett, TJ, and Boogie, and and uh, and uh, Tonka. You know, guys that have played a lot of reps uh, as well. So, like the learn that we got a lot of depth and some good players there up front. Learn that we got depth at defensive end. Learn that we uh, uh, have a physical group at linebacker that has really that linebacker they've really taken a step. And then um, learn that we've got some good young defensive backs that you know are going to help us this year. Um, kind of still a depth chart question, but I mean. Where right now do you feel like the biggest position battles are still happening and who are kind of the, the guys who are competing for those roles right now? Um, I would say – I like that question, Emily. You're trying. Um, you know, we just need to have like a depth chart, just have it up here, and we can just like dissect every position. That can be the press conference. Um, position battles, uh, offensive tackle as well. Um, y'all been out there. I'm not going to just give you layups. Y'all been out there and watch practice enough to see that, you know, we've got some guys that are – we've got guys, and I've said it before, the flexibility flexibility on the offensive line. We've got guys that can play center guard tackle. They can play multiple spots. But um, the offensive tackle position, without giving names, is certainly a position battle going on, not just for the starters at each position, but who are the two, top two backups going to be. Um, that's a battle. I just mentioned it, but who is our fourth, fifth, sixth receiver? Those are battles that are still to be determined. How does that running back position shake out? Um, Dick, uh, Dick on is going to be listed as the starter on the first depth chart, and rightfully so. What does two, three, and four look like? Um, who is our, uh, you know, who are the top backups at defensive tackle for sure? Um, and probably who is our third and fourth corner, you know, because we're gonna we're gonna play multiple guys. Um, we're gonna play multiple guys in the secondary with different personnel groupings and resting guys and things like that as well. So how does that third corner position shake out? So those would be the top ones that jump to mind. But again, we honestly nothing is necessarily set in stone you know we're constantly competing competition is a core value of this program and that's not just in preseason camp and spring practice it's throughout the season as well um, we gave the example of our to our players this morning of keenan nelson i mean keenan nelson hardly played during the season last year and he's the starting nickel in the bowl game uh, because he continued to compete and progress and get better as the uh, season went on it wasn't necessarily because of by default because we had some guys that didn't play in that game it was because he worked hard throughout the season and and uh, and and earned it. I know Spencer Rattler's probably the starter at quarterback, but how how does that position shake out behind him with Luke, with Lenore, some of some of the other young guys? See, just another depth chart question. You're welcome. Man, I had to finish on the strong way. Note. Just say what's the depth chart look like? Who's your set backup quarterback, third quarterback? <laughs> um, Luke is our backup quarterback right now. And um, certainly we're excited about Lenoris. We're excited about Tanner Bailey. We're excited about Colton Gauthier. I uh, really like that quarterback room. Um, it's really a bunch of good good young men that are making each other better as well. Um, you know, so Lenoris has, has gotten better this preseason and, and has done some good things. And uh, Luke has as well. You know, Luke's just a really good football player. And is, I sit in that quarterback meeting a lot. I was in there this morning and he just – He's smart. He gets it. Asks great questions, whether it be routes, protections, you name it, uh, and has done a nice job. So um, that would be that situ that position. But again, every position we have on our team is is in constant competition. All right. Appreciate you guys. See y'all next week. <laughs>